Hello, and it's a very special House of Decline, Father's Day special. Father's Day special, it's a pagan holiday, you know. It was invented by the pagans and practiced by the pagans for many, 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 many years before the Catholic Church got to it and botched it, turned it into something for the patriarchy when it originally been about just eating a, eating a huge lamb dick. That's what Father's Day was about. You'd roast a big lamb dick and you'd eat it and you'd gain its male energy. And everyone would do it, you know. Every all the kids in the, in the in the old pagan in the old pagan tribe, you know. And these were white pagans too. They were Celtic. So don't worry about this, Jack. This isn't this isn't any you know problematic shit here. We're talking about white people. And they would eat these lamb dicks, and it would mm-hmm. infuse them with power. And they'd go off and they'd run in a circle, human centipeding, you know. But not you know not literally attached to themselves. But they would be licking each other's anuses. Uh, and this was Father's Day, and then the Catholic Church came in, and they and they ruined it. They positively ruined it. And you know that's where you come in, Stephen. That's where your analysis. Oh, uh, is this my come in point? Um, everything yeah. Alex just said is wrong. Uh, <laughs> Father's Day is pagan. It, it pains me greatly um, because Father's Day is a Catholic holiday, not a pagan holiday. It has no pagan roots at all. Um, Celebrating Father's Day is acquiescing to the paternalism of Rome, and Mm. I suggest that we strike it from our calendars forever and only celebrate Mother's Day. Um, (laughs) We must embrace the matriarchy, convert to Judaism. Um, Right. I have pagan roots because I've been to Bonnaroo. So, of course. uh, (laughs) uh, And also we have a wonderful, very special guest, three-time champion, Jeremy Appel. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks for having me. As always, um, I just wanted to wish a happy Father's Day to all the single dads out there mm-hmm. struggling with in family court. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We believe yeah. in you. You'll make it out. You'll make it out alive. You've seen the pursuit of happiness. Just solve a Rubik's cube in in like in front of a powerful guy. Who that I think is, is Dan Castellaneta. <laughs> that is the ultimate like dad's rock movie. The Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, Will Ferrell. I mean, Will Ferrell. Will Smith. (laughs) Will Smith has a lot of dad's rock movies or a lot of like father-son movies, which also involve Jaden. I guess the only other one I'm thinking of is After Earth. I haven't seen that one, but I remember, (laughs) I think it was with his other son uh, in the 90s. He did a song that like uh, sampled or transposed uh, Just the Two of Us. Do you remember that? Uh Yes, I think yeah. I remember that, but it, it was his infant son at the time, right? Yeah, it wasn't Jaden, right? It was he the wasn't son. Rap, the son wasn't rapping along with him, right? Yeah, it wasn't the son he loves. Mm. <laughs> is that, is I, a different son? Yeah, I think so. Like pre Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh, okay. Here's what's going to happen: Jaden Smith is going to release like the, a modern Tyler the Creator esque version cover version of Parents Just Don't Understand. With featuring his dad Will Smith on it, it's gonna millions, millions of copies sold. You know, it's That'd gonna be pretty like, cool. I would listen to bring that. recorded music back at least once. Yeah, right, can you think of any other like uh, father relationship movies that are funny? Um, <sighs> from the ninety, I don't know. I, I can think of Getting Even with Dad for some reason. Or does, is that a movie that rings true in your memory? Was there a movie that featured like Jonathan Taylor Thomas yeah. and Chevy Chase? It's is that not, what I'm thinking of? It's, I think it's not Chevy Chase. It's it's Tim the Toolman. Is it Tim the Toolman? I remember Jungle to Jungle where right. Tim the Toolman has a child <laughs> that uh, grew up in a tribe. And that that was a father-son movie. That was yeah, about that that's what I was thinking of. Here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, these are some great dad movies. I feel, oh, Zoolander? With John yeah. Voight, mm-hmm. so there is a heavy dad element to yeah. eventually. <laughs> I'm a mere man, and that, that <laughs> movie's man. That, that's interesting because John Voight actually does have strained relationship with his children. With um, Angelina Jolie, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of which, uh, I believe he plays her dad in Tomb Raider. If huh. I'm not mistaken, he is the real life. The real life dad plays the the fake dad. John Voight rocks. He's <laughs> hmm. He's the heart of the Baby Geniuses it's, franchise, okay? He's extreme. Isn't he extremely conservative? It's yeah, conservative. no, he's like he's like an Israel guy. Like, he's not even Jewish, but he's like one of those guys where it's just like, 
he wants a president who will stand with Israel and like that's it. Wow. Um He's I a think real clash of civilizations guy. Yeah, I think that um he knows some Chabad guys who like got hit help them clean. And so I feel like <laughs> as a favor, he's like made his whole politics about Israel. Um, mm. <laughs> That's very funny. Angelina yeah. really fucked up one night. There was blood everywhere. And so he got his Chabad people. It's like, I don't know what it's like. Remember when Angelina was in a freaky phase and was wearing blood around her neck with her like Billy Bob. And then, yeah. You know, she, yeah, that but was then weird. she became normal, normal. Uh, she she became the goddess. She became Earth Mother. I think she's still weird. Like you, you can tell that she's John Voight's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's and like, that's, here you uh, go. Remake. Re, this is John uh, Voight's gonna, car. <laughs> and Angelina Jolie releases a single. Parents just don't understand. Featuring John Voight rapping <laughs> along with her. Sells a million copies. <laughs> Everybody loves it. I it, yeah, it'd be funny having John Voight as a dad. You think your dad's conservative? You think your dad's a crank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I do remember. There's a video of um, Jeremy Scahill was covering some Republican event, and mm-hmm. uh, I forget. Like John Voight was like harassing him. <laughs> like he like physically like accosted him. And he's just like, oh, the lying, like, Democratic Party-controlled media. And Scahill was like, actually, The Intercept is uh, very critical of the Democratic Party. And he's like, we found a good one. We found a good mm-hmm. one here. And he, like, like gave him, like, a bear hug or something. And Jeremy <laughs> Scahill is just like, uh, hi, John Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. But there is some sort of, there's a weird perverted, there, there's a weird perverted sickness when you as a left person find common ground with a right person uh, over shared hatred of liberals. You know, like I, I had a very long discussion with my dad today. And at least, you know, we, we come at we're, we're very at odds with new, numerous things, but at least we hate Biden. You know, we can both agree that Biden is a weirdo. You know, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, you. You had a similar you used to do. You uh, can I can I out you, Jeremy, as briefly having worked for the sun? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, but you I found just weird to... common ground with those guys we'll, there, right? We can edit it out. We'll edit out anything that will advance your career. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> malicious editing. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in some, like, I would make an, uh, an effort to read the opinion pages. Um, mm-hmm. And I would sometimes find myself in, like, unfortunate agreement. Like, yes, you're right about liberals but it's for all the wrong reasons right yeah but it's you know but, you but, have but it's sort that of... it's that um liberal hypocrisy that yeah. i think the left and right can but but you don't want to get too much into that because then you just become like matt taibbi right who just, so you like, do the enemy of my enemy of my i mean you yeah, become post-left you, you That's just the become argument a conservative the left yeah we yeah. can hate the liberals so much that can be our common ground that that can uh undergird our politics which is you know one way to do it, I mean, tying myself to Republicans would be nice. It would be nice to have the army on our side. So that's one. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to know whose side the army's on these days. Yeah, that's true. That's What's the, uh, is there a lot of critical race theory going around? There's a lot oh, of critical the race theory in the In army. the military? Yeah. Oh, yeah. probably not. No. They're doing white fragility in the military. <laughs> probably, probably absolutely zero. Uh, I yeah, critical race theory. That is, you have brought up the word of Jeremy. You mentioned the word of the day. Ding 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 yeah. ding ding ding. Critical race theory has become the new monster on uh, in right wing talking points. Uh, even though uh, when you ask them frequently to define what it is, uh, they give an answer that is nebulous and unhelpful. Like I, I don't know what it's like in Toronto or Ann Arbor, um, but in Calgary, like the cops are like, yeah, like systemic racism is a problem, and we need to address it. Um, so they at least pay like lip service to, yeah, um, you know, quote unquote wokeness or I mean, all these, all these terms are so uh, ill defined mm-hmm. that it's just kind of like anything you don't like, like it's canceled. Yeah. But any, but anyways, I'd like at least the 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 cops here in Calgary have this like stated commitment. Of course, all their actions 
demonstrate otherwise, but there's at least that lip service they pay um, to uh, combating systemic racism. And it, it's like that in other places too, right? Like the <laughs> yeah, CIA. I, I, you see this all yeah, the CIA ad. ads. Yeah, yeah, that's very funny. Um, or and then like so, you'll, you'll, you'll see the, like the cops. They, like every time Pride rolls around, the cops will do a, a performative thing. That's like, we know the cops were very bad to the gay people in the past in the bathhouse raids, and this is, we apologize. I think uh, someone, I forget which police chief of Toronto, but someone, it wasn't Fantino, it was somebody else, apologized for the bathhouse raids. Blair? In Toronto. Could have been Bill Blair, public safety master now. Might have been Bill Used Blair. Be Might have been Bill Blair. He, he, he was the top cop during like the G20 and. Uh, it was the guy uh, after uh, him. The so guy who fucked Sanders. up the MacArthur stuff. Doug Sanders. Did he take the. It was, Wait, that is the his guy name that, Doug Sanders? The, the, the um, Afro Canadian fellow. No, nah, I don't. I, I Mark think Sanders. that might have Mark been the Sanders. guy that. Doug Mark Sanders Sanders. is a Globe and Mail columnist. There you go. Um, You're mixing up your Canadian heroes. Yeah. Canadian <laughs> icons. Uh, yeah, but so there is this... You, the winds have shifted in that you have to pay lip service to this now. But as you say, Jeremy, it is just lip service. You just have to do one extra step before you get, you know, the bulk of the media off your back. I say yeah. the magic words and people will say like, oh, he's trying. He said it, right? So we don't yeah. have to hound him anymore. The Edmonton Eskimos uh, believe Black Lives Matter and stand against um, systemic racism. Did, Though did they, they are the Edmonton name? Elks now. so They're the yeah. Edmonton Elks. Although Canadian football. Good. The gr- mm-hmm. the grammarians got involved and they were like, shouldn't the plural of Elks just be Elk? No, they actually <laughs> did get linguists involved yeah. from the University <laughs> of Alberta. And they said that Elks is appropriate. It's not mm. like the Toronto Maple Leafs, mm. which makes uh, no sense. Speaking oh, of linguists, yeah. have you emailed anything to Noam Chomsky lately, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> I I actually once emailed Noam Chomsky when I was a teenager and I just started <laughs> reading him. And I don't oh. even remember what the email is, but it was really fucking dumb. And mm. I think it was based on something he had written in like the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Did so he ghost you? I, I never I never heard back from him. Oh, I never he, and he him. answers back to everyone. It must have been uh, it must have been bad. No, I'm I bet I bet he just didn't see it. I bet that's the reason. I feel like Noam Chomsky is one of those guys who make sure he has like zero unseen emails in his inbox. <laughs> yeah. Because he's old. So the the yeah. reason why this whole emailing Chomsky thing is because one of the weirdest Twitter accounts, one of the weirdest left Twitter accounts, Zay Squirrel. You know about the squirrel? Yeah. 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 Very, very powerful, but very strange vibes come from that squirrel. <laughs> yeah, I don't that know what account, it is. That account follows zero people, and that to me is very sus. Yeah. If, 77K follow. following, zero follow. It's, it's incredible. Does, and does I think Drill that's what follow makes anyone? It, yeah, I drill follows people. Yeah, Doesn't you drill? must. Yeah. Uh, e- either way, but Zay Squirrel is like a, a pretty uh, consistent left uh, poster, sort of in Greenwald wing left territory, even though they've criticized Greenwald's turn recently. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're in Greenwald mm. territory. However, I believe, because he's very critical of Greenwald, um, but I think what happened was he, he got banned for some reason and then mm-hmm. Greenwald like advocated for him to, um, be reinstated because Greenwald has like 2 million followers. Like, you know, he has a lot of clout in that regard. And so mm-hmm. the squirrel was allowed back on and then he was, or they were like, uh, yeah, Greenwald's not so bad. I mean, I have my disagreements with him, but I, you know, I think he's a man of principle. It's like. But it turns out there's a history to the squirrel account. It turns out the squirrel account previously, and I didn't know this, it came up. Uh, it got it started getting a lot of followers because it started uh, in like uh, the early 2010s doing a lot of Lula shit, retweeting a lot of uh, Lula stuff and also praising Greenwald for his uh, exaltation of Lula as well. So there is this. I mean, they drifted apart as Greenwald got crazier and crazier over this past year and a half, it seems. Is it only this year and a half? 
I mean, since 2016, Greenwald's been like going off the deep end and being like, on the one hand, like Trump's not a fascist. What are you talking about? You're just being hysterical. Like Russia gay is fake, and he's right about that. Um, but then he turns around and goes on Tucker, and he's like, "The Democrats are the real fascists." And it's like, mm. again, it's that post left thing, right? Like Matt Taibbi and like Michael Tracy, mm. where it's just like you hate liberals so much, and mm. your your analysis isn't like really grounded in like class mm. or you know race or anything like that yeah. so you just become a conservative yeah you just hate this one particular type of smug prick and as we know from yoda hate leads to fear fear leads to anger anger leads to suffering um, yeah yeah as yoda also I, said fear is the mind killer fear he said yoda said that yeah yoda said that uh, <laughs> <laughs> when is dune coming out you mean uh, hot, hot? I call it hot Dune. Hot it's Dune? Because it's got a hot guy in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's it? The, the guy from uh, Call Me By Your Name. Shalamu. Shalamu. Yeah. I, would, I would stick How his about whole that face other star of, in uh, my of, asshole. Uh, Call Me By Your Name. Uh, oh. Army Hammer? Yeah, Ooh. he's not having a great year. No. He, yeah, his his cannibalism fetish got out. <laughs> yeah, sick. is he can Wasn't he... Was, he's being investigated for sexual assault or... I think so. I think he got. I think there was some Me Too allegations on top of that. Uh, he seems like he would. He seems like he would choke someone without their consent. He seems Gomeshied up. And so that, yeah, that was just proven in a court of law. Allegedly, <laughs> as, 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 uh, our all podcast of this has is allegedly over. Our podcast is taking place paragraph. in Canada, which apparently has different laws regarding what you can and can't say. So I'm hoping allegedly protects you two. I live in the free mm -hmm. and uh, the the free living uh, wild America that you both <laughs> so obviously have envy towards me for. So I'm able to say things like Alex is is a is a card carrying member of the alt right, and I don't get sued. Uh, but He's that's right. not not the case in Canada, which is it's interesting to me that Canada doesn't have the same kind of free speech things, which is both a positive and a negative, I think. We don't have a First Amendment, nor do we have a Second Amendment. That's, that's mm. fascinating. But but I Failures. mean, we have, we have free expression, right? Like we, yeah. It's it's not like Jordan Peterson says that you know we're putting people in jail for misgendering people. Like, um, you know, we do have protections. It's just there's no absolute right to free speech, and so our libel laws are, uh, uh, I guess you could say, looser. Right. A bit more like, exploitable by jerks who yeah. are yeah. willing to sue. Yeah, like, um, you know, say if you were to accuse uh, an alt-right guy of being alt-right, and they're mm -hmm. like, no, I'm a free speech ad activist. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And then they sue you. Um, mm -hmm. It can get pretty uh, pretty bad, um, which uh, a friend of mine and Alex is Michael Buker. Mm -hmm. works for uh, Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East, um, is being sued by a uh, just such a person, this guy who's, like, affiliated with Proud Boys. Mm -hmm. Like, there are pictures of him hanging out with Proud Boys, and uh, Michael called him alt-right. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's being sued. And so, uh, like, the U.S. has anti-slap legislation, right? Like, is that fr fr frivolous lawsuit stuff, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, if we do, I don't think it's super strong. I mean, we certainly are. But you have the First Amendment, so you don't really need that, right? Because you're kind of... right. I mean, we have all kinds of frivolous lawsuits about other things. Um, the particularly though with libel, I think the distinction is that we have a, a very strict interpretation of libel, and you have to not only know that what you're saying is false, but you also have to have the intent of, like, doing damage to the person. Right. You have to prove that they're being malicious, whereas in Canada, you have to prove you weren't being malicious and that, like, you did your due diligence. And, okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in any event, uh, Michael's being sued by an alt-right guy, a free speech advocate. A free speech advocate. For uh, calling him alt-right. Um <laughs> Is that yeah. an insult to him? Is is that like is that supposed to be a bad word? Isn't that sort of a fairly neutral assessment of someone? Like if this guy is like putting forth 
up until identitarian now, politics. They just so they've and a thing has just happened. I think I don't. I'm probably a month late, maybe more. But they're calling themselves the new right now. So the they're new the new right. right. And, That's great. You know, oh, so they're just neocons. <laughs> I, I no. Come back to neocons. It, the new right That's is made a rack again. The new right is they're not neocons. They're it's the alt right, but the alt right got a bad name, so now they're the new right. The new right. It's yeah, like didn't new Richard Spencer? Doesn't he have like a new right review or some shit? <laughs> new Maybe. right review. I don't uh, know. I haven't kept up on him. I can. Sorry for the typing, googling. I wonder. Do you guys what, see I that? What, do you guys see that white noise documentary? No. Mm -mm. What white noise? Tell me. Uh, it is the Atlantic did this documentary on the alt right, and they focus on Richard Spencer, Lauren Southern, and uh, Gavin McInnes and Mike Cernovich, and they just sort nice. of um, dream blunt rotation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they just sort of, uh, you know, look at each of them as sort of part of this larger alt-right ecosphere and sort of what roles they play and sort of mm -hmm. where are they now. Uh, apparently Richard where? Spencer is living with his mom in Montana. Oh, that's nice. In Whitefish, Montana? <laughs> yeah. I, um, I took a mental note that that's where he lives because I think the fact that Richard Spencer lives in Whitefish is so fucking funny. Also, Lauren sure. Southern's uh, husband is a person of color. Mm -hmm. Nice, and yeah. he knocked her up. Nice, so, <laughs> like that. You, it kind of makes her the worst white supremacist ever. Like, yeah, she can't. Uh, I mean, she's been she's been out of the game for a while, though. She's, yeah, like, she's the, 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 the the movie hints that she may be having her doubts, and because she's young as fuck. Yeah, I think I she's saw. Also, clips. smoking hot. I saw clips really? of that. Really? She <laughs> was, you don't think she's hot? She was like, I guess so. She was like sexually harassed like crazy by all yeah. of those people. Well, by Gavin McInnes in particular, they have in the movie where he calls her up and you just, they, they don't play what he's saying, but you just hear her responding to being sexually harassed by Gavin McInnes. Gross. Um, yeah. Let me tell you, there are too many brown babies entering the country, which is why I want to impregnate you, Lauren. I'm the clown prince of crime. I'm Gavin McInnes. Mm -hmm. Is He's he the, the original Joker? Joker? He is Williamsburg yeah. Joker. That's He's what... the worst. Yeah. He had Gavin this McKin yeah, he's the he worst. had this YouTube video where he's like ways to get away with peeing in public, and mm -hmm. as a as a you know a wasp. Uh, Puritan, nothing offends me more than urinating in public. It is an essential breach of the social contract, and it <laughs> makes my blood boil to see someone urinating in public. I just want to smash his face in, but I just going to smile and nod when he, when he walks by because mm -hmm. I'm an I'm a incompetent and impotent wasp. I'll just be like, yes, yes sir. You are stuck to your wasp programming. You can't ever, yeah. you can't yeah. ever escape it. Uh, what will you do when Gavin McInnes crossed the streets? Will you choke a bitch or will you fail? Yeah, that's interesting. He's hard to choke though because he doesn't have a chin. He's probably pretty strong, so I don't think I would want to go after him physically. That's why I always carry my telescoping rod, my my, my telescoping metal rod. So very I can do violence very on long. Gavin McInnes. So yeah, in case you're in the Gavin McInnes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you, we all live, we, well, two of us live in Canada, so you never know when you may run yeah. into Gavin McInnes. When a McInnes might come by. When an, when a Chinook will bring a, a McInnes along. Uh, is he still, did, there were rumors that he got divorced, but he's been out of the game for a while, too. All of these well, architects. Well, also, his, his, his ex-wife or wife is a person of color. I think she's mm -hmm. she's Métis. She's an indigenous person. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. I mean, but that's the thing is they they have these, and so they can say I can't be racist. My my wife yeah. is so and so. Uh, so I'm not saying that they don't love their partners. I'm sure they do, but it's gee, it's useful. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Uh, so fucking yeah. Where, where is the alt right now? The state of the alt right seems to be in a shambles. It's like looking for, as you said, Stephen, like a rebranding. 
Yeah. Like they're I, going to new right or whatever. So I've been torturing myself a little bit by listening to Jordan Peterson's podcast. And nice. um, I listened to the one where he had this guy, Michael Malice, on. Michael Mal- <laughs> That's a crazy Michael- name. Yeah, Michael Sounds Malice like a good guy. seems like it's probably a pseudonym. Um, Michael Malice Jerry is, Anger. is trying to <laughs> he's trying to position himself as like the authority, the academic authority on 4chan and the extreme right. And okay. so they talk about it's Jordan Peterson and this guy Michael Malice talking about um, 4chan and the the term the new right is coming from this guy Michael Malice, and mm. you know. He is like someone who won't grow up, basically. Um, mm-hmm. P- Jordan Peterson is the reasonable one in this conversation. Like okay. Michael Malice Yikes. is like making jokes like how he hopes to put everyone in camps. And okay. Jor- Jordan Peterson just like doesn't respond to that. It's oh, just like okay. <laughs> moves on um, yeah. and tries to he Peterson tries to get him to admit like some form of cooperation is is necessary and goes into like you know the psychological aspects of children playing games how not every child can play the game they want but with cooperation all children can come together and play one game so at least everyone's playing a game together great and, metaphor great analogy and then michael malice is like yeah but that just treats us all like we're children and i was like yeah well you are you're you're at, wait you're so at... he <laughs> he's an expert on the right but he's also right wing He's not like a Will Sommer type he's, or like he's a, uh, he claims to be an anarchist, which to me is I mean, I sure. think he's disguising that he's a fascist by claiming to be an anarchist. It's pistachio disguise over here. Um it's really I really cannot recommend it like at all. <laughs> the Jordan Peterson podcast. Would you listen <laughs> we, to the uh, actually episode? on on Big Shiny Takes we played a we played a clip of an, his interview with a uh, a Canadian icon by the name of Rex Murphy. Ooh, nice. He's this Beautiful like for Rex. Yeah, he's like this old guy from the Maritimes who um apparently he used to work for like the CBC public broadcaster and you sort of this affable like avuncular type. Um and now he's just like a far right crank who like um is like frightened of white genocide <laughs> and uh yeah no they had him on uh peterson had him on his podcast to talk about how uh you know no one reads the classics anymore um or when they do it's just to cancel like people right. that they're like canceling homer yep. no uh, one reads the classics anymore they don't read little mermaid or <laughs> cinderella instead yes, they just Beauty. read Moana and Frozen. These are terrible texts. Did he really Our children say they're... are learning critical race theory through Moana. They're trying to cancel Homer. Did he actually say that? Well, no, because Rex Murphy has this thing because he, he is very, like, erudite. He was a Rhodes Scholar, so he, he just says, mm. like, his columns, it's all, like, the dumbest, most simpleton takes, but it's written in this, like, very uh, abstruse uh, language, so... He he thinks he's very witty. And he's just like, uh, you know, when people read Homer now, they're they're uh, looking to see if he was racist. I mean, people just aren't. <laughs> mm-hmm. People are against knowledge now. Um, it, it was just yeah. It's <laughs> That's just such a funny idea. Yeah. Um, the Odyssey <laughs> very problematic. <laughs> um. <laughs> Really? Are there people who are like? I guess there must be. They're probably. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's well, probably. Yeah, I mean, there are people, people who critically analyze the classics, but like that's not like they're reading the classics in doing so, and they're not. Necess- but is anyone trying to cancel the Odyssey because like Odysseus was racist or something well, like that? Sort is- of. Some people, some places are getting rid of their classics departments. So Howard University Ooh. got rid of their classics department, um, which eh. made it, the ever you know my dad who's a classicist flipped out. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. A lot of academia in general is sort of being strangled anyway by the fact that. If you get a you if you major in anything in the humanities, it's very hard to find employment. You mm-hmm. you can't like that's what's happening. It's not that 
Like all of these changes in academia are responding to an economic situation that's less than ideal for anyone who's in those, like those humanities. So it's like they're responding to material conditions. It's easy to figure out. Like they're trying, like critical theory is like, well, maybe we can do this and we'll be able to get jobs. It's like, (laughs) there's like, like, there's like hardly, for people who majored in English last year, there was, I think, 800 available positions for, te- for for being an English professor. So mm-hmm. so to to have this idea that you're going to major in English and then become an English professor, like it used to be like 50,000 people a year would do that and there was tons of jobs. Now there aren't. So they're mm-hmm. just trying to figure out ways to 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 make more jobs in those in they're those just, or fields? they're trying to find ways to pare down academia and they can just use any excuse in order to get rid of it. I don't know. Uh, what is... Uh, 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 but is anyone trying to cancel Odysseus? <laughs> Are they trying to cancel Telemachus? Um, Are they maybe. saying that... I What What did Odysseus... Or did, they, they, did they say that Odysseus was bad because he was ableist, because he injured a cyclops? You know? Uh, is someone trying to do that? No one's trying to seriously do that, right? They're claiming they are. Um, no. The, the, the conservatives are claiming that they are uh, trying to stop teaching, trying to stop teaching the Odyssey. Um, mm. But that... I mean, to, what did we learn from the Odyssey? To what, me, what's truly valuable about the Odyssey? <laughs> it's, it's not that they're canceling the Odyssey. It's like there aren't any jobs for people who are classicists anymore. That's what mm. it has been canceled by. Yeah. Well, and economy. it's like these same people want to defund the humanities and then they cry that uh, exactly. no one's reading the, the classics anymore. It's yep. like, hmm. Right. Like Jordan Peterson thinks that humanity should be abolished because they like teach Marxism. Yeah. But Jordan Peterson would work at the Latin factory in a heartbeat. So he's the real hypocrite. Yeah, uh, the, there's, I mean, the, you, they're talking out of both sides of their mouth all the time. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. that, well, that's we, why they have this widespread appeal. Because people who are less like, like not, not, not so much Rex Murphy, but like Jordan Peterson and, you know, all these like anti Ed Paul guys is that, if unless you're very politically sophisticated and you know what they're trying to do, it sound mm-hmm. they sound totally reasonable. Um, because yeah, they talk they talk out of both sides of their mouth. So on the one hand, like free speech is absolute and it needs to be protected at all costs. On the other hand, what you called me alt right? I'm gonna sue you. Yeah. Or like, remember that time that Jordan Peterson tried to start a kill list of communist professors? At yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And that all of his fanboys funny. were like, we, "He's just giving people the, uh, he's just giving people a list, and they can choose whether to take those classes or not." And it's like, yeah. like I think that already exists. Look, you know like, who also wrote lists? Schindler. Okay, and he was a fucking hero. It reminds me of Mr. Burns compares himself to Oscar Schindler, uh, except but his shells worked. Damn it, yeah, yeah. my <laughs> shells worked. Damn it. No. Uh, oh my god. Um, Freaking. Well, you know what's another thing that you have an interest in, uh, Jeremy? Uh, uh, that we haven't talked about on the show, but I think is super interesting. Is or did we talk about it the last time you were on? Did we talk about the Azarova affair? Mm-hmm. I don't remember if we yeah, spoke about it last time did. I was on, but th- we did the the yeah. okay. It's okay. We can we, talk about it again. We did. We review the Azarova, of, but I think uh, we should, or just review uh, this. What's the what's the state of Israel on this Father's Day? Like uh, we got Naftali Bennett in. We got yeah. him. What's he all about? Um. So remember the last guy. Benjamin yeah. Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. He seemed like a real corker. Seemed like a real bad guy. Seemed like yeah. a real murderous psychopath. Yeah. Well, this guy is worse. Um, nice. In that, well, he he just doesn't have a because Netanyahu's right. He's a kid from like Philadelphia. 
Mm-hmm. Um, right. So he has that sort of like Americanized sheen to him, right? Like he was mm-hmm. Israel's ambassador to the United States or the United Nations in the eighties. Yeah. And he would just go he was on real rock and roll. Yeah. And like lie incessantly. But Neftali Bennett is like totally in favor of the settler movement. Um nice. against any sort of I mean, he uh once said that um that Arabs were swinging from trees when uh, Jewish settlers arrived in Palestine. There you go. Um, and he also, he, he was involved in a ra- Israeli raid in Lebanon in the nineties. Um, <laughs> so he's done some real bunch personal of, violence. Yeah. That killed a bunch of humanitarian workers and he's boasted about killing Arabs and how there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Um, yeah. But of course, um he he's in power because he, the uh the centrist who was asked to form government just got totally cocked by him and he's <laughs> like you want me to be part of your government which includes like center left parties and like a yeah. conservative uh an what's Islamist. that guy's name yair or something uh yet your lapid is the centrist. Yair lapid. yeah he just got totally cocked and so bennett this far right guy um whose supporters like chant death to the arabs is prime minister for the next two years, and then Lapid will be prime minister after. Supposedly, yeah, this government's not going to last that long. Um, because I, well, Bennett's just not going to give it away. He's just going to well, say, well, no. "Well, no, he's going to do what Netanyahu did, but yeah. successfully, and start uh, uh, start killing Palestinians to like unite the country behind him." And yeah, um, you know how like Wag the Dog was sort of whimsical. This yeah. isn't that. <laughs> this is this well, is they much more. Broke, they they broke the ceasefire, right? Didn't Israel break the ceasefire recently? Yeah, but well, they, yeah. Were f- they were firing balloons. What mm. had to you know? They had to protect themselves from like uh, this incessant balloon fire. You know, they yeah. were firing Nerf at them. Yeah, which is like <laughs> stunning. Like I, you know, I'm sure Alex does too. Know people who like believe that shit that like. What, what what's a country supposed to do they're firing balloons at us and yeah. burning fields it's like uh you know settlers in the west bank burn olive fields like regularly like palestinian olive fields and uh same people are oddly quiet about that um yeah but it's interesting seeing like um sort of the situation in jerusalem and the west bank sort of get this attention mm-hmm. um in between, I mean, like, the tax on Gaza. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing that uh, inevitably happens with the news cycle is uh, since the since the killing died down from, like, uh, a couple of... I mean, it hasn't really died down. It's all going on. But since, like, uh, the world stopped paying attention as much uh, from uh, since two weeks ago. So there has been this uh, movement for Bennett to escalate a little, which he has done, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that that's my understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, that um, uh, yeah, I I mean, and then well, actually, what I did want to talk about was: Do you hear about the uh, the vaccines? Um, mm-hmm. Israel's yeah, the million to... vaccines, the million expired vaccines. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god! And I such, saw that's um, such a fucking asshole move. Oh my god! Tell the yeah. story. But it's just purely for, like, Zionists to, like, feel good about themselves, mm-hmm. you know, because um, once the Israeli government says something, that's it for them, right? They don't investigate mm-hmm. further. Yeah. Because, um, but, um, yeah, I saw, uh, you, you know, Hillel Neuer is? No, UN, I don't know who Hillel UN Neuer is. Guy. That sounds like, no, that sounds like a made-up name. But he's one of those guys that, like, just focus on the United Nations and how Israel's being treated very unfairly uh, okay. by the United Nations and talks about they how have the U- so much power. The UN, it's, yeah, it's a very yeah, the important human rights council is, yeah. is, is like a, you know, decision-making body apparently. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's just all the like gotcha shit or it's like Saudi Arabia sits on the human rights council and like just listing all these human rights abusers that sit on the human rights council. And it's like, okay, so should only like European countries be allowed to sit on it like Mm -hmm. white countries but anyways and and these guys are all like obsessed with israel like it's all they fucking think about all day and then they're like the united nations has an obsession with israel that 
an unhealthy obsession with Israel. But this guy, um, <laughs> like, like the, Jonathan Safran Four and Natalie Portman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you're so, the, so obsessed with Israel. Israel lives rent free in your head 24 <laughs> 7. But um, so this guy tweeted, uh, uh, he was like, disproportionate response. Uh, 4,500 rockets, a million mm. vaccines. And it's like, <laughs> I'm, I, I feel like other things happen there that you didn't include in that. Yeah. Um, you know, like the vaccines being expired and then the Israelis will take from the Palestinians fresh um, Pfizer shipment. Um, but, but I mean, the whole point is like PR, right? It's yeah. like... They turn down our vaccines. Yeah, you do the gesture. It doesn't matter yeah. that they were garbage vaccines. They were vaccines. They're technically vaccines. We gave yeah. them. To but them. it's this narrative too, right? We They fire rockets at us for no yeah. reason because we're not doing anything wrong ever. Yeah. And we give them vaccines because... We, we turn are the other sort of cheek. Even though, yeah, even though like uh, months ago uh, when people pointed out that while Israel itself had, you know, one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, wasn't giving uh, vaccines to Palestinians in the occupied territories. And anyone who pointed yeah. that out was accused of anti-Semitism. Look, um, Israel cares about the health of Palestinians. That's why they do free demolition for all their inadequate hospitals. You know, so that they can build them better again, you know? Yeah, build back better. Build back better. You got to gotta blow them up first, you know? Attack the hospitals, you know? The reason why your infrastructure is bad, got bad hospitals, which is why we got to blow them up, okay? We're doing you a favor. Yeah, speaking of build back better, I just wanted to highlight a little piece of news from this week, which is that um, I was in the Wall Street Journal, the Pentagon, Biden administration— uh, the the Pentagon and the Biden administration are pulling out lots of weapons systems from Saudi Arabia, which is great. And then they're moving them over to point them right at China, which great. is scary. <laughs> it's nah. very scary. So, yeah, we're going to point all of our weapons at China, and then we're going to start accusing them of uh, leaking the, the virus from a lab, which may or may not have happened. Um, there's a story in the Times today saying um, the Soviets, in the Soviet Times, there was an anthrax leak from a Soviet lab, and the Soviets denied it. And the federal government went with that because they didn't, for some reason, sort of building up this case that our enemies are always leaking stuff from labs. And <laughs> I'm getting worried that the lab, the reason we've seen this about face on the lab leak, like now you have John Stewart going on Colbert making lab leak jokes, is because yeah. the um, the higher ups are, are are getting ready for some kind of not necessarily a war, but saber rattling against China. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I my feeling now is we should just give up on trying to figure out where COVID came from because it's only going to result in bad things. Uh, COVID just, came from your heart, okay? Yeah. It COVID, came from it came from you touch yourself at night, okay? COVID is because we're all terrible sinners, um, yeah. and that's why <laughs> we, we have COVID. This is our punishment for I the I Carly reunion. <laughs> you hear Alberta's uh, opening up next week, like ooh, fully? Yay! Whoa. Oh God! No oh, masks. Kenny. No oh, Kenny. Dude, masks. I've in been... Alberta. Kenny kills you. Masks are done here. <laughs> People are not wearing masks anywhere in here. Like, I go to the grocery store, and it, it's over the past couple of weeks, like starting two weeks ago, I think it was at 50%. I'm, I went to Kroger, and now mask wearers are like 20% of the people at Kroger. Um, and that's the only place I go, as, as a, a regular Ooh. listeners of the Ooh. show know. What are the cases like in Michigan? Because I remember when Alberta was the worst in North America, Michigan was close number two yeah that's down everything's down i mean cases are down um, vaccinations up vaccinations aren't that great in michigan compared to like the northeast i think we're at like between um i think we may be at 60 percent vaccination rate 
which is so that means we're lagging behind like New York, which is at 70, Maine, which is at like 80. And when you say vaccine, you mean full vaccination or just yeah, one dose? Full, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm getting my second dose tomorrow. Nice. But you'll probably feel yeah. weird. But what? Well, the general, you- the general, sorry, I interrupted, but I'm, I'll go for my point because it mm-hmm. was good. Mm-hmm. I feel like the general fear that people were being like, will be so anti-vax that a mass of people will not get it vaccinated enough. Uh, that was sort of, it wasn't unfounded. Like there are people that are like that, but in numbers that were far less than the, than the doomsayers were predicting. It's people not went good. with the vaccine. I don't, I don't know how much more we'll be able to vaccinate in Michigan. I don't know if we'll actually be able to hit 70%. Um, what mm. I said, Jeremy, is you'll probably feel a little weird. I had like an arm. Oh, pit. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I had the arm first, pit pain. The, 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 first, uh, the first dose, like I was fine that day, like my arm hurt a bit. And then the next day I drove to Edmonton, uh, which is a few hours away to see my girlfriend who lives there. Mm. And... I got there and I was just like, holy shit, I'm so tired. And then I, I didn't, wiped out. yeah, I didn't like, like, I just need to lay down for a bit. Like I, I, I didn't even fall asleep. Just hmm. I was yeah. like physically tired. I, yeah, I had a a armpit pain. My ass. You may have some armpit pain. Interesting. Oh, yeah. had armpit yep. pain? No, that, and that was common. I was on a discord chat. A lot of other guys were reporting <laughs> armpit pain. You have, you have, a pretty big lymph nodes in your armpit and that's where it comes from because mm. the lymph node may swell up a little bit um mm. but you may have it anywhere else if you have pain somewhere like just be like do i have a lymph node there well, my, maybe yeah um, do your lymph node identification seminar mm-hmm. you get your big buboes coming up you Got know it. in the bubonic plague that's they you had little pustules called buboes that would come out Bubo. of you Bubos. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's why you ever get an inflamed uh, uh, lymph node? It's fucking terrifying. You, get, you feel like, oh, no, my so. humors, my humors are misaligned. You never it get really the ones is, at the back of your ears that ever get inflamed? Really is amazing the, that we developed a vaccine this quickly and that it supposedly works. Um, it's because it was all planned <laughs> by Gates. <laughs> <laughs> they had the they had the vaccine ready to go, and that's why everything is everything I mean, the, is fucked up. I the conspiracy do, do I, part of me makes me. I was like, "Are we? Is this like an anti-China thing? Is this our pivot away from China? Like we're going to blame them for this pandemic that we started, and then like reindustrial reindustrialize America because we can't make anything in China anymore?" Boxer Rebellion too. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Presumably the British still aren't in China. Uh, maybe they'll get rid of all Western influence in China. Well, I mean, they're trying. They're trying to do that. They got Baidu, which is a great... That's the <laughs> that's a, a new type of guy. A guy that uses Baidu and thinks it's the superior search engine. Oh. But he's like in the West... I'm I'm a Baidu guy. Oh yeah, you're. Oh you you like Duck Duck Go? Great. I'm a Baidu guy. You Go to Vancouver. Idiot. Become a Baidu guy. Move to Vancouver. I'm gonna become a Baidu. I'm gonna become a Baidu evangelist. <laughs> Every we do all of our searches on Baidu. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking it up on Baidu right now. Yeah. I <laughs> actually is- have Baidu open. What happens if you search Tiananmen Square? Ooh. Let's look at it. Oh no, a bunch of dissidents come in. Yeah, you're gonna. Your house is about to be in like not the doors like broken down. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hear a live. We're gonna hear a live struggle session. Yeah, as we as we we're had gonna be the before. first podcasting. Uh, speaking of uh, struggle sessions, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, Stephen, have you heard about what's happening in the Green Party of Canada? Um, <laughs> I only an inkling, and it's. It's very hard for me to understand. I don't have any of the backstory, and I don't really know what's going on. I know it involves someone named An- Anami Paul. <laughs> Anami, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, it's pronounced Anami, but I, oh. I'd rather call her Anami. 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 Re- really? Anami Paul. It's pronounced Anami? Anami Paul, yeah. Anami. Well, okay. Anami uh-huh. Paul. Well, She's bad. <laughs> She's not good. She's very bad, yeah. So, uh, basically... The Green Party of Canada um, had a leader named Elizabeth May, who was kind of, 
she's a mess i would say liz may's a mess but like she had respect she was charismatic she brought the party from having no seats in parliament um she she won their first seat and then they won another and then another um the first two were in bc on the island Mm -hmm. the third who was first elected in 2019 is now a liberal um was in new brunswick but uh basically so may stepped down they had this leadership race and it was like anime paul who's just like i'm a black jewish woman um Mm -hmm. and like that was her that was her platform essentially Mm -hmm. in that she also has a phd in like international like humanitarian law or some shit she's from princeton too she's got a she's got a a, a ivy league education (laughs) yeah very qualified um and so she ran against dimitri lascaris he was like good candidate he was an eco-socialist um, he was an, he's anti-imperialist. He wanted Canada out of NATO, um, Canada out of the Lima Group, which is sort of uh, um, intervenes in, in, in you know Latin America and overthrows leftist governments. Yeah, and um, is part a strong supporter of uh, boycotts, divestments, and sanctions against Israel. Um, Anthony Paul like wouldn't say what any of her foreign policy positions are really um in fact during one of the debates another candidate uh maryam haddad um who's also an eco-socialist uh confronted her millennial (laughs) (laughs) confronted uh paul about her support of the coup in bolivia Mm -hmm. and paul's response was how dare you like watch your tone lady young lady um i have a phd in international law she said her husband worked for the coup government as if that is like so it's she was a supporter of genie agnes yes yeah okay and um yeah i mean she just that's loves us weird. foreign that's policy fucked up. but anyway so um during the israeli attack on gaza she issued this statement that was like I urge a return to like track two negotiations or like some like uh, shit that Correct. doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. The New Brunswick MP, uh, Jenica Atwin, called her out on Twitter and said that that's completely inadequate and that this is yeah. apartheid and talk some sense. And then uh, one of Paul's senior advisors went on to Facebook and said that, um, so all, all, because, th- Paul doesn't have a seat in parliament, right? Yeah, she ran in Toronto Centre against an incredibly popular liberal candidate. Yeah. A a race that she was almost guaranteed to lose. So it was mystifying to anyone why she would run in that uh, run in that. uh, Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think she lives in that rang like she's from Toronto. But the Greens big bases of support are B.C., and to a lesser extent, the the Maritime. So the two coasts, which makes sense because they're going to be the first to go. Um, when um, you know uh, climate change uh, comes to fruition, I guess you could mm-hmm. say. Uh, but they're also filled with feckless mountain tippy types who are amenable to this type of green eco. Yeah. But, uh, so, anyways, uh, one of Paul's advisors took to Facebook said that. The party's three MPs, all of whom were much more critical of the Israeli attack than Anime Paul was, uh, were anti-Semitic and uh, they were discriminating against Jewish people in the party by criticizing Israel. Um, And then nothing. That was it. Paul didn't defend her MPs or anything. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and so the one in New Brunswick uh, weirdly switched par- switched to the Liberal Party because she felt her views on Palestine were being suppressed in the Greens. Um, weird, whereas, I, I which is the weird because Trudeau is like totally pro-Israel. Yeah. Um, and so basically, she came out. She was asked whether she stands by what she said. She said she does, and she knows there are people, there are other MPs in the Liberal Party who agree with her. And then, like, two days later, she uh, tweeted, uh, please read my statement, which is always, you know, 
great song. <laughs> and she pretty much <laughs> just went to being opening. like, yeah, like both sides need to get along. I'm sorry, oh, my okay. language and flame divisions. And it was just like, all right, you suck. Um, but so the Green Party has been embroiled in sort of this internal crisis since she quit the party. Um, and um, some sort of key members of the party called on her to resign. Mm-hmm. and she kicked them out and then held this bizarre press conference where um, she said, like, you know, I'm a strong, independent, black Jewish woman, right? and Justin Trudeau is trying to uh, destroy my momentum that <laughs> doesn't exist because I don't have a seat in parliament, and uh he's no ally he's a fake feminist which is true but like uh, yeah, has absolutely that's not the nothing to do failing, yeah. um so she with, hit all the bad faith uh, identity uh, politics it seems like she's got higher ambitions if she if she pivots to attacking trudeau who's not involved in this that seems like no with the like the fact that her mp switch to the liberals oh, but oh okay that well, but that's like again it was bizarre it was like nixonian level it like it, yeah. the, the 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 like she also she she was saying how there's this like attempt to oust her that mm-hmm. was so racist and sexist in that she immediately put a stop to it and uh those people are no longer members of the party right so it was very it was almost stalinist it's like i you know i've discovered this coup attempt but don't worry i foiled it <laughs> she's um, getting the green party secret police you know funny, a bunch yeah. of a bunch of people in half shirts <laughs> but yeah. no that's not true the green party <laughs> base is a bunch of uh, rich li- uh, like secret liberals on vancouver well, secret island conservatives like you're like, right secret con- that's the turn she's got to become post left that's what's going to happen <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, um, the way she uses, weaponizes identity politics is very much uh, like the post left who say they hate identity politics, but then Glenn Greenwald's like, now as a gay man. Yeah, you are I, you are being homophobic if you criticize me for saying that I I hate all trans people and think they deserve to die. You know, that's you're being homophobic when you criticize me just because yeah. I have the average Gen Xer's opinion on trans people. Yeah. They'll also accuse you of being like a member of the of some of like the PMC class. Like if, yeah. if yeah. you have an opinion, like even like even if you just have an opinion that that is that is countering him in any way. He'll be like, Oh, you're just another one of these like yeah. elite managers. Yeah. Woke scold. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. And so I actually obtained a leak recording of some staffers confronting Paul about her. This is the day after, uh, Jenna Catwin left the party. Um, saying that the staffer of hers, Noah Zatzman, um, Again, she did nothing to like rebuke him and uh, say uh, that maybe you shouldn't accuse um, our party's only members of parliament of being anti Semitic. Um, and um, the, the party circulated like a petition that got like 1,500 signatures calling on him to resign. Um, wow. and, and then finally she was like, okay, we're not going to renew his contract when it's up. Um, but I, he's like still like very much in her orbit, right? And Wait, how can you accuse a guy called Noah, uh, accuse a guy Noah Zatzman of being anti-Semitic? No, no, he accused the party's MPs of being anti-Semitic, right? Oh, okay. Zatzman He's was the, the guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. He's like her right wing, like neo. But anyways, it's just this incredibly cynical weaponization of identity politics. She also uh, attacked uh, Freeland and said that Freeland is Canada's, finance, Canada's uh, Nazi sympathizing finance minister. It's true. Of, so. uh, of uh, sort of being his like token female. Yeah. And, there's nothing like That's I can forgive true, a lot though. of things, but making me like defend Trudeau and Freeland is like a bridge too far. You don't have to defend Trudeau and Freeland just because enemies being 
weaponizing uh, bad ideas at them. But also the riding in Toronto that she's trying to win mm -hmm. um, used to be held by Christia Freeland. So I'm not sure it's uh, until they moved Freeland to another riding um, mm -hmm. because like they were redistricted, but um, yeah. Not good, but yeah, no. And me, Paul is like, like that. That did you watch that press conference, Alex? I I heard that press conference, and it's her just saying a bunch of evasive weasel language of her like, what we are doing is we're moving back to the essence that we have to do when we founded this with togetherness and forthrightness. <laughs> and you know what we found was, uh, we had to combine our views and and take it in this different direction where we had our. Uh, political paradigm set up such that you know and it's this endless yeah. string of bullshit like that that's just avoiding but, the questions of yeah but anyways uh, what people are saying yeah this this leaked recording i got um the party members like if any of us had done that if any of us had like attacked the party's only mps as being anti had attacked them in that way publicly like we would have been kicked out of the party um and to which uh, Anime responded uh, saying that there are lots of things that are going on behind the scenes and that sometimes transparency isn't appropriate. Um, <laughs> she that, is very stolen. Um, yeah. And she was like, well, we may lose some party members, but we'll also gain some. <laughs> and, but but all these all these fucking like blue check like media freaks are just like playing up that angle that paul says she's standing up to uh you know fake feminist trudeau and mm -hmm. all the racists oh. in the party um and wow. uh that she actually wants she's trying to make the party um you know, win more seats. That's her goal. But like, well, they've already <laughs> lost one. Um, she claims there's like unprecedented momentum that Trudeau's trying to stop, but I haven't seen any data that <laughs> Look, suggests. There's unpre She's getting more news than ever for doing this, for doing the, we're talking about her, you know? <laughs> Maybe if she makes enough bad decisions, she can get famous enough such that people will vote her just because they recognize her name. Maybe that's the plan. If you just keep fucking up, but upwards. That was the Mulcair plan. It was very risky. I mean, that's out. what she's doing. She's trying to, because it worked so great for Thomas Mulcair. Yeah. Um, Move was, right. Yeah, it worked great. He lost half his seats. Mm -hmm. But Thomas Mulcair was the leader of the, it was a similar thing where the New Democratic Party, which is like the center left, like Social Democratic Party, had a very charismatic leader. Um, who's well liked named Jack Layton. Um, party did better than ever did under him. They became official opposition because the liberals ran a, a, a guy from Harvard uh, named Michael Nadiev, who yeah, the most is, unlikable oh, guy. Yeah, on the I didn't know that guy. Yeah, yeah, he he's um he's a mixed bag. He has some good books though. He's like a smart guy, but yeah, he, but he's like Reed Richards, you know, with all the bad bad dad vibes of yeah, Reed Richards. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, anyways, Mulcair. Jack Layton got sick and died, and then the NDP were at a crossroads. <laughs> except in the NDP, there was no like left wing choice. It was between like one neoliberal, Ryan Top, mm. and another Thomas Mulcair, and he won. And he tried to, uh, you know, he ran on like trying to. He he said that the NDP was going to balance the budget. And then mm -hmm. Justin Trudeau was like, well, we would rather uh, put our public services first. And so Trudeau sort of outflanked the social Democrats from the left on yeah. that key issue. And so the NDP just took a beating yep. and then he was turfed um, as leader at a convention in Edmonton that was very contentious because the Alberta NDP, which was in power here for from 25 2015 to 2019 the much maligned notley government yeah they love the oil sands and um the turfing of mall care came from people who um were more um you know environmentally oriented were more mm -hmm. sympathetic to the palestinians because mall care like um kicked out a bunch of candidates who were 
pro-Palestine. One of them is now a Green MP, Paul Manley, um, mm-hmm. who actually took uh, when all this uh, fracas was happening between Anime Paul and like the rest of the party. He actually took all of his party affiliations out of his Twitter bio. <laughs> That's and a sick there, move. There I am, I'm, that... He's a Sigma male. He's the Sigma male yeah. of Canadian politics. Yeah. yeah. Paul Manley. And then he, and then, and then he put them back in. Um, yeah. Okay, you know. That's because the, the Sigma male can do that. Uh, it's called, yeah. the, it, you have the grind set. So, you know, <laughs> do what you want. Paul Manley is grind setting on Canadian <laughs> politics by, uh, you know, uh, proving mysterious to everyone that he interacts with. <laughs> um, NDP, you know, to their credit now, have taken a consistently pro-Palestine position. Even though, yeah, uh, I mean, now... there's some gap between the party membership and Jagmeet Singh, but mm-hmm. um, I would of the of the like four. Well, I, I guess of the five leaders because there's the Bloc Québécois. Yeah, um, are I they pro Palestine? I don't. Know. Yeah, they are. They are really interesting because they also hate Muslims. Yeah, but, but they, they hate, hate Muslim Jews immigrants. More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're weird and like social democratic, yeah. but also very xenophobic. Yeah, um, I think that's that's so funny that the Bloc are pro Palestine. I love that combination. Is it because they they don't want Palestinian immigrants coming to Canada? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I think they want a free Palestine, so they don't have to. Uh-huh. Um, Great. Though Quebec Get over there, Montreal is beautiful. We do not <laughs> let the Jews deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Le Juif. No, I would say uh, uh, like Jagmeet Singh is the only party leader that like I think has met <laughs> an actual person before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he seems he has a personability. I mean, Trudeau is a pretty off-putting dude. Like, I get why people like I get why people like my dad have a preoccupying hatred of him because he really does come across as a, like a trust fund brat or yeah. somebody that has a lot of entitlement. You if know, he, he just has that cut his, of, if he just cut his hair, I would go so far. If he just had a like a buzz a cut army cut haircut, I bet <laughs> your dad would actually would be like, actually, Trudeau's an upstanding young man, and I think. I, <laughs> You're right. The floppy cut is doing him a disservice. He needs to. He looks too much like a boy band member, or like yeah. now a boy band member from the like, Star Trek Mirror Universe. Like when all the world leaders were posing on stage. Um, you remember at the, I think it was the G7 where they all like lined up six feet apart on stage and looked like little action figures. Yeah, um, that was so good. Trudeau stood out with his horrible haircut. <laughs> Uh, or you don't like his mop top? You I don't mean, he, like his wonderful little mop top? I mean, he, he had the best suit. He has the best dress, the best tailored. I mean, hey, he's I, the I most think yoked. Because he's, he's got the biggest dick out of all of them. He's clearly a narcissist. The only people who yes. wear their hair like that it, and have, <laughs> are just clearly narcissists. Um, and you can tell because his, his tailoring was so top top-notch tailoring there you go um, he was like he, you know how like mengala was always yeah. richly tailored. i mean joe biden looked the best because i'm an american and that is what i believe uh it doesn't yeah, matter he does look great it doesn't, it doesn't matter what he says or where he is or even if he knows what's going on he's mm-hmm. the president and he's the best dressed one just that's he's a matter of problem didn't, yeah. didn't trudeau um he got into some trouble for talking about the lying fake news media really did he, oh, he said something about like wrapping the newspaper in fish yeah. or something like that. He like, said some sort of very strange folksy yeah, aphorism well, about. Yeah, yeah. Some reporter <laughs> was like, like, what, like, what, 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 what's actually being done here? Like, what, like, are you just like? It seems like you're just talking. Like, and he was like, "Well, what we're going to accomplish is going to be around what." It's, it's like. Um, what we're accomplishing is going to be around even as people only use the newspaper you work for to wrap fish uh-huh. or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Our like, accomplishments I, last like, I didn't know people use newspapers. newspapers to wrap fish until back, you said that. Back in um, like clearly. the 50s. <laughs> but then the uh, the Radio Canada um, reporter, the, the French language uh, CBC, yeah. uh, asked him for en français. And he was like, well, maybe I won't. And he said out loud, like, 
Yeah, maybe I won't say that fish wrapping anecdote in French. Yeah, it comes across as much dirtier in Quebecois French. It comes across <laughs> yeah. as like a pussy eating joke. Is it? it that would be so French. funny if that's if the, <laughs> you did, upon translation he makes like a sexist joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then he wins favor with the Quebecois because, oh, uh, yeah. he told the sexist joke. Well, I think we that's also it. a big thing in federal Canadian politics is saying one thing to, like, the majority of country and then another to French Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, can that's fascinating. Because, like that. so, the the act of translating, so much shenanigans goes on there, especially with Putin. Like, mm-hmm. as someone who took just a little bit of Russian in college, like... I, I, I can't say I understand it, but I can like hear it. And I'm always questioning what the translators have mistranslated when they're translating uh, world leaders. And that must yeah. happen all the time in Canada where you say one thing in French and one thing in English. It must be so frustrating. Yeah. Uh, see, in French, uh, uh, Trudeau is always saying kill whitey. <laughs> Uh, which is tuer le blanche. Yeah. Okay. Tuer le blanche. Uh, yeah. That's what he says. Well, uh, speaking of uh, Father's Day, um, we should give a shout out to Justin Trudeau's real father, Fidel Castro. Nice. Boom. Hot guy. Mm. Hot, sexy guy, Fidel Did, do Castro. Do you know about that conspiracy, Stephen? Is that yeah, all? I know about it. I, I, I'm oh, an immediate, I immediately endorse it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge if true. Well, because, you know, Madge Trudeau, you know, she got around, right? You know, she was no spring chicken, you know. She yeah. was uh, she, she was fucks. fucking the Benny and the Jets. She mm-hmm. was fucking all of all of the Archies, you know, each one. She fucked Veronica. Uh, which Canadian prime ministers ate pussy? You know, we're talking about Batman. Which Canadian prime ministers ate pussy? Pierre Trudeau? definitely ate pussy. Pierre I, ate pussy for sure. I found a Mulroney, very, no. very funny. Mulroney, me- did not eat pussy. A, a very funny medium article with someone with 90 followers. So a nobody being uh, writing an article saying, of course, Fidel Castro is Justin Trudeau's dad. Of course. <laughs> of well, course. Well, just the context of that Pierre Elliott Trudeau was famously uh, close friends with Fidel Castro. Um mm-hmm. And and like he like he he on on sort of on the world stage he was definitely a maverick, in a way his son wasn't. Like he went to China and hung out with Chairman Mao um, before Nixon mm-hmm. did, and yeah. uh, he had good relations with Russia, and um, yeah. So, he, I, but was Margaret Trudeau notoriously sexually promiscuous? Yeah. Yes, that is that is also true. Oh yeah. no, <laughs> she was also she was also like not good for PR because she would do stuff like sing happy birthday sexily at like uh, at galas and luncheons. But like and not like to that. the sexy American president, just to like Ted Kennedy <laughs> or like yeah, do, uh, yeah. She sang this it chick to is Ted. A, uh, weird. I'm uh, a creep, and even I'm not a. Uh, I don't even want this. <laughs> No, that's true. If she had come on to Ted Kennedy, he would have gone in a second. But then she would have drowned in a car no, accident. This, so who's to say what this, would have been? This completely unfactual and unsourced uh, medium article is claiming that she did have an affair with uh, Ted Kennedy. Um, really? Yeah. That's where I saw Really? It. Didn't pull the name out of a hat. And apparently that's also, um, let's see, who else? Um, Thick Jagger. No, she says uh, Keith Richards. Yeah, Keith Richards. Okay, that's cool. That's cooler than Mick. Props props to Margaret Trudeau. You fucked the cooler Rolling Stone. And there's a picture of her, like, touching Fidel Castro's shoulder. and That's hot. Yeah. I'd fuck Fidel. Wouldn't you fuck Fidel? Uh, Wouldn't you suck Fidel Castro's dick? I would out of respect. Yeah, out of respect. You would suck Fidel out of respect. I love Fidel. (laughs) For, Mr. For Castro, the sir, I'm going to suck your fucking dick. I'm going to give you the best stroke you've ever had in your fucking life, Castro. <laughs> I'm going to stick my fucking thumb in your asshole, and I'm going to stimulate that pee. Okay, that's you're gonna not... Have re- such a, you're going to have not, such a pee spot orgasm? That's not respectful anymore. You don't do that. Castro would be like, I poppy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put your thumb up Fidel Castro's butt respectfully. There's no... You can do that. You no. can do that. That is you not can. a res- that's not a respectful thing to do. It is if he consents. 
Well, you can't speak Spanish. How are you gonna? I can speak. I can speak Cubano with my <laughs> eyes, and also Fidel Castro <laughs> spoke English, so it's fine. Uh, oh man, he, you I don't can know. Put your th- you can put your thumb up Fidel's asshole. You can put your thumb up Sankara's asshole. <laughs> you can you can put your thumb up Trotsky's asshole. Look, it's a wide margin of asshole thumbs. If you don't want to rock the peace spots of your various socialist heroes, I don't know what you're doing out here. I don't know why you're even on the internet if you're not rocking the peace spots. I I like this. I they look alike too. I like this a lot. Yeah, they really do look alike though. That like, it is <laughs> it's not impossible. No. Yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> oh he, my god. He looks way more like Castro than he does uh his uh supposed father yeah, yeah his, his full alleged head of, father. i've always found his full head of hair to be suspicious mm-hmm. he's also got that you know real moon face that castro had he's yeah. got that big thick face meat that castro had big cheeks you know so is that the the house of decline party line is yeah justin trudeau that, is actually fidel castro's son yeah but yeah. he's like castro's fail son you know like how kamala harris's parents are communists and they're like kamala you failed at the highest yeah. level. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that why she's always fake laughing all the time? Yeah. And she's like, <laughs> don't come. Don't come. <laughs> yeah, I want Kamala to like, I want Kamala to do uh, edging with me where she's saying, <laughs> don't come. <laughs> don't come. That's you saw that video so of, of her edited next to Trump, Trump going, I've got to come. Yeah. And, Provided yeah. a lot of laughs for all. That's we fucked missed up. that guy. What the <laughs> fuck? I, that's, I think Biden just put her out to pasture on that one. I don't know what was going on, but she looked terrible giving that speech, telling the Guatemalans <laughs> not to come. It looked like she was like someone had a gun to her head and was forcing her to say it. But yeah, because that's her duty. She's been given the worst fucking veep duty possible. You're a woman of color. You get to tell all the brown people why they're bad. That's your job, Kamala. That's we crazy. We can use you as very, it's a, I don't envy her. She's going to get, like you said, she is going to get put out to pasture. She's not going to inherit the power of this administration. No, I don't Buddha think judge so. Buttigieg will. Yeah, it's going to be Crazy Pete. Love yeah, that guy. Oh, Crazy Pete. Yeah. Can't well, wait. He the, killed, the, he the killed dance. Champ. Remember the Pete Buttigieg dance? Yeah. Get high, high, holds her a living. That was gotta, all gotta, the rage huh? in like early 2020. <laughs> We had high, the highest of hopes for people to judge. And to be fair, he did rat fuck uh, the Iowa thing. He did declare victory prematurely with that. And people seem to like yeah. that. I don't is, think. He, is he CIA? He's CIA, right? He's CIA. Yeah. He's gonna be. He's gonna be fucking president. He's gonna be. The, I have no doubt in my mind. I have he's a quibble. I have a quibble with uh, the the with that Jeremy. Um, the CIA is not the only like organization in American politics that creates monsters. Um, so oh, going straight to the CIA, it kind of gives like the state department a pass when I think a lot of people um, are products of the state department. When, when, when uh, people are, are saying it's the CIA and that ignores, you know, it's like I was saying this to Alex, like the American Legion and the state department <laughs> create some, this thing called boys state. Which all mm-hmm. of the bright young boys, it's called Boys and Girls State now. That sounds all like the, a Ween song. All the it bright young boys, boys and girls boys get State. together and they do mock governments and they get indoctrinated into um, how our government works. And that's yeah. organized by the State Department. And it's from there that like the, the ghouls like Buttigieg are pulled. Yeah, um, the USAID, uh, from which AOC also has a pedigree from, uh, yeah. you know, it's they're filled in, they're tons of ghouls as well. Like, I do but, think you know. the CIA, it's a little more hands off when it comes to domestic politics. I think they're doing all kinds of shit in uh, foreign places. But if they were to do s- stuff like that here, they could probably lose funding. Yeah, and they don't want to lose funding. Because uh, there's there evidence to, just, yeah. Some is there a, oversight. Yeah. Is, is there evidence to suggest that Crazy Pete was part of the CIA? 
I don't oh, think so. He, worked for, he traveled the world working for McKinsey, which is a very sus company. Yeah, yeah but that could just be State the, Department people. Did. Like that's like the State Department is is just as bad or worse as what the CIA does. Um, but he's also a military guy too. Um, he got like a weird desk job in Afghanistan, so he yeah. could just say, "Yeah, I've been I've been in the shit." I've, Someone should look into that. I'm actually reading a book right now. This is like pretty unrelated, but Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool. Um, Arguing that like Charles Manson was like a uh, an MK Ultra um, test subject. Yeah, I think I I think I know the book you're reading. Yeah, yeah, um, Chaos. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I think he was on Chapo at one point. Yeah, they talked. They 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 really uh, talked about that book. I have the ebook. I'm trying to pull it up on my phone. Yeah, I uh, I, I have the ebook as well. Um, yeah, it's very I, convincing. I, I can believe that. He was not. I can believe that all of the weird terrorists. Well, well are it's like MK the. Well, hold on. Let's talk about the Nova Scotia shooting. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Largest mass that. shooting in Canadian history. And both, like, yeah. and what we share with you is that our largest mass shooting, also by a guy with apparently no motive. Both guys. Oh, is that Paddock? Yeah. Yeah. No yeah, motive. Most. Does has there been a motive yet for your largest mass shooting? No, I mean the cops were so secretive about it because first of all, the guy was an RCMP asset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. Yeah, ties to the cops. Yeah. Um, second of all, it came out. Uh, ma- little magazine called Frank Magazine, which Frank is sort of magazine. this weird like satire gossip. Like it's almost like a Canadian gawker, but it existed before gawker. Mm. They leaked the nine one one calls. Ooh, mm. And it shows that cops knew this guy was driving around in a cop car, killing people before they notified the public. Mm. And um, when they did notify the public, it was through a tweet. <laughs> they tweeted. They they posted through it. <laughs> well, you know, everyone in Nova Scotia is on Twitter. Everyone knows about Maritime Twitter. Yeah. Dog Island Boys. Yeah, you know, Dog Island Boys there. You know, it's, uh, you know, it, don't you hate it when you get ratioed by your best by your best friend there? I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know Maritime slag. But yeah, um, total op. And yeah, the, tell us, tell us a bit. Or tell me a bit about uh, Stephen Paddock, Stephen. Well, he single-handedly brought like 400 pounds of of weapons by himself, apparently, up to the 50th floor <laughs> of one of them, like of a high security building without anyone noticing. That bellhop got a great tip. Right. Set up a bunch of cameras so that he could see anyone coming in and then started shooting and the apparently and then uh just committed the worst mass shooting in america and there has been no there's been no motive presented as to why he did it other than like he was disgruntled must oh he must have just been a disgruntled guy and then they shut down all like it's not in the media it has been memory hold I, I listened yeah. to the Trunon episode, but um, I find some episodes of Trunon like uh, it's easy to like lose, mm-hmm. um, yeah. l- sort of lose focus. So they mm-hmm. jump around a lot, and uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that was that's an interesting one. And I, yeah. I feel like a lot more mass shootings than we think are like have some sort of an intelligence connection some like asset gone rogue you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah there's always there's always some connection there's always things are not as random as they seem perhaps Nah, they probably are what if it's just ne- it's not it's not anything it's not it's not the state department it's not the cia it's briar's ice cream they're that behind is, it's, it all it's, it's Briars. It's been Briars this whole time because they have their ice milk product, ice um, milk. and they need to keep they need to keep the world in a constant state of confusion to make to stop them from realizing that Briars isn't actually real ice cream. You know, so that's why they orchestrate these mass shootings. Is it ice milk? 
It's some sort. Of, it's it's called like ice flavor product or something like that. They found it. It didn't meet like the FDA standards of ice creams, and it's called like ice dessert product or something. Ice. T- <laughs> it's, well, that's it's pretty a very sus. Funny weasel thing. Yeah. So it's yeah exactly. It's sus, right? Which is why they're orchestrating the mass shootings all over the place to distract the world, to distract the world from the Big Briars conspiracy. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Uh, so you you first said, is it is it more likely that it's random? And then you sort of jokingly said, maybe it's the ice cream corporation. Um, it's, Isn't that sort of like a it's a like a Thomas Pynchon sort of thing? Some ridiculous thing is behind. Yeah, it's the post office. Yeah, um, yeah it's the post office. Yeah, the post office is what's doing because they the yeah. the post office controls information. Uh, so the postmaster general. <laughs> New, Newman <laughs> is the, Thomas Pynchon. Yeah, <laughs> I like. Well, yeah, I like the idea that Wilfred Brimley, a resurrected Wilfred Brimley, is going to come and fuck us up. You know, if we do anything wrong, if we run afoul of the deep state, he's the final guy. He's cigarette smoking man. Is is uh, Wilfred Brimley the postmaster right. general? Well, I I think my prediction is we're going to find out in ten to twenty years what actually happened when they think no one's paying any attention. Um. And then there'll be like a minor story about like, oh, actually, this guy was involved in this program and he had mm. this connection. Um, like kind of like how stuff about the Iraq wars coming out in dribs and drabs, mm. like the majority, like just talking to my dad about how the, the link that was made between Al Qaeda and Iraq to 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 create the conditions for the Iraq war he doesn't have any memory of that happening, but that I do. And that's something that happened. And that was fake. Like, yeah. um, there was this Iraq war. Uh, no, the link between Al Qaeda and Iraq. Oh, okay. I thought we were going down like a serious rabbit hole. <laughs> Just like how that like Iraq Holocaust denial, happen. but for the Iraq war. <laughs> yeah. Or that's going to happen if it hasn't already happened. Yeah. The, we did. The I thing mean, is, th- that's something we that did does that. happen is minimizing no, the casualties. We did. The, what they learned was that you have to do the denial while it's happening. And so mm. when Clinton was doing these sanctions on Iraq that resulted in 500,000 Iraqi children dying in the 90s, mm-hmm. we denied that that was happening. A report came out in like 99 that we were responsible for 500,000 Iraqi children dying. And Cl- and Amy Goodman from Democracy Now! confronted Clinton with that figure and was like, what do you have to say about it? And he, he was just like, that's not happening. That's just wrong. That's oh, just- yeah, didn't he get mad and storm off? Yeah, I think so. And yeah, because that-, that, that, was, that was, I don't want to say recent, but within the past decade. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, or was I, this while this it was, was happening? I think while he was still president. I think it was in 2000 when he was on his way out. And so people were sick of Clinton by that point. They didn't care any about any of his, you know, lame, lame duck sex pervert. Um, but we <laughs> lame did duck a, sex pervert. We did Hell a, yeah, that's my text-based sex video game. We did a, uh, what I would consider to be like minor genocide in Iraq before George W. Bush invaded at all. <laughs> Some light genocide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we made it so that they couldn't have potable water for a decade after the first Gulf War ended. Clinton just, like, we just decimated their economy and set the conditions to be terrible. Um, That is not, that's like not talked about. That that is denied, and it was denied while it was happening. Um, Mm -hmm. And it takes time for stuff like that to come back around. So that's why I predict that the like the RCMP shooting and the Las Vegas shooting like will eventually get some info on it when the higher ups think we're not paying attention. But then there's the other side of that which is like people are so desperate to justify these things that could just be as a result of maybe Steven Paddock just was fucked up and he had the unique skills necessary to orchestrate mayhem on that scale. And he just wanted to make someone suffer in the way that, you know, uh, the 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 guy that shot up the... How? That doesn't uh, make sense. He was so far away. He's going to... What is he getting his jollies from, like, like looking in binoculars at people? <clears throat> like a, like a he, sick he, person like that would drive a car into the, into the people. 
I don't know. I don't know how to diagnose these freaks. Maybe maybe he was one in a million. Steven Paddock, one in a million, you know. <laughs> mm. um, well, but yeah, I think that is the scary thing about it is the fact that there is no apparent motivation. And, you know, that becomes part of the conspiracy about it is like there's a motivation for everything. VTech had a motivation, you know, he was like, it was easily discernible why he wanted to shoot everything up because he was a weird alienated guy. But, you know, why can't that be the explanation for Steven Paddock? Why can't he just be a weird alienated guy like Cho Sheng Hoi? Well, it's I don't because... think he was, though. Yeah, but I think the, 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 the point is that you don't just go shoot somewhere up. Something happened to trigger it. Yeah. Um, it, right. It, not just general alienation. Cause like we're all alienated under capitalism. We don't go kill people for no reason. Well. So there's something that sets them off. And when it's this secretive people, you know, fill in the blanks with speculation and some of that speculations informed. Um, yeah. and well, yeah, there's, a lot there's of it isn't and right. Yeah. And so conspiracy theorists seize on that, 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 um uncertainty mm -hmm. and it's like well maybe it was this mm -hmm. maybe it was the jews yeah i'm, I'm not saying Masons. that something didn't <laughs> it was definitely the jews set stephen paddock off that's why he killed a country concert which is known for its uh being replete with People of the Jewish faith. Well, ISIS Jason says... Jason Aldean fans are mostly Jewish. ISIS took credit for it and, and said that Stephen Paddock sure converted to Islam. Uh, so. Maybe he <laughs> did. We should believe everything <laughs> ISIS says. That's so funny. They're like, yeah, he... Uh, oh, yeah, he was Muslim. Yep. Oh, yeah, this guy? Yeah, sure, sure. I, 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 ISIS, ISIS so should just funny. take credit for everything. They do. Oh, you know, uh, you, uh, you know uh, the, the famous Seth Rogen movie, Pineapple Express? That's us. That's yeah. ISIS. Oh, you know, climate change? That, you know? Actually, Exxon Mobil is all, that's a whole Muslim thing. That's, that's, that's Muslim. Killing yeah. the whole world. It's ISIS. <laughs> ISIS, you know. We take advantage of that. You know, we're doing jihad against Mother Nature. You know, ISIS. That's how bad we are. <laughs> this is, it has been a jumble of the episode. We're coming up to 90 minutes of yep. pure recording. The time uh, is growing nigh. Jeremy, thank you for being on. We love you when you're on. You're a font of, of knowledge. A, a, a news... God damn it, he's a newsman. He's a newsman a news and I won't have you say anything else. Yeah, you're a news hound. Uh, Jeremy, do you have anything to plug? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I am the host of two podcasts. Um, the first being Big Shiny Takes, which you may have heard uh, both uh, hosts of the show on at different points, mm -hmm. and as well as the Forgotten Corner, which is more of like a serious-ish interview show. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Jeremy Appel 1025 and I also do some journalism sometimes, uh, much of it at The Sprawl, where I cover Calgary City Hall, so... If you're interested in Calgary City Hall for whatever reason, uh, check out my work. Definitely I'll just cover will. Yes, yeah. nice. Definitely will do. We're gonna also we're gonna put links to that in the description. We're also gonna put a link to the GoFundMe for Michael Buchert to help him retain the ability to call members of the alt right members of the alt right. Mm -hmm. And that's it for this week's episode. Happy uh, Father's Day if you're Catholic. And if you're not, then <laughs> screw you. If you're pagan, happy Father's Day. No. <laughs> <laughs>